I think they both appear on my screen. So yeah. So I think we're ready to go. We may be a second. Okay, I sent Cynthia a text, and I'm waiting to hear back if she's going to be able to join us. Okay. Well, um, it's already 3.08, so Larry, why don't we uh, get started? We'll get started and hope Binti will join us. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Accelerated Schools Finance Committee meeting scheduled for today, June 6, 2020 at 3 o'clock p.m. It's now 3.09 p.m. and we will start our meeting. The meeting is being held. Binti will be joining shortly. Perfect. Okay, thank you. I'll go through this and we'll, we'll get rolling here. Thanks, Leonard. The meeting is being held in compliance with the governor's executive orders N-25-20 and N-29-20 and the Brown Act. Members of the public have been invited to join this meeting via telephone conference line on the notice of the agenda. We welcome public access and if any members of the public would like to provide public comment at this board meeting, please send your comments in writing to board meeting board meeting public comments, all one word, at accelerated.org prior to or during our meeting. In your email, please include the specific agenda item to which you are commenting. During this finance committee meeting, public comments are accepted only for agenda items. Comments submitted by email will be read aloud during the board meeting for up to three minutes. A reminder to the public that when submitting emails, you may but are not required to provide us your name. Comments that have been already submitted will be read aloud. There is no need to resubmit your comments. Any comments that are submitted late that is, after the agenda item has been voted on, will not be read. A note for those listening on the phone line today, the phones are muted. That's why we provide an email address for public comment. Let's call this meeting to order and I'll ask the roll be taken. Great, thank you. So um, uh, we'll call for um, um, Finance Committee Chair Larry Pikus. Present. Roll call for Committee Member Leonard Rabinowitz. Hello, Leonard. Present. Okay. Present. And then uh, roll call for commi finance committee member Binti Yost. Binti, I can't hear you. Are you um? Do you have your mic? Um, we have uh, Binti on the call, but we are unable to hear her. So at this point, we can just move forward. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is approval of the June 16th, 2020 Finance Committee agenda. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have the most current version of it sitting here. Um, I take a motion uh, to approve uh, the agenda. Uh, so moved, Leonard. Okay. And hopefully Binti will be able to second that. I assume I can't second the motion. I believe you can, uh, but Binti, oh, here, I'm gonna unmute Binti. There you go, Binti. You can hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you. Sorry about that, guys. So we're, we're looking for a second to approve the motion uh, to approve uh, today's uh, committee agenda. And the agenda is? I'm sorry? What's the agenda? Is it posted somewhere? Yes, but here, let me share yeah, my uh, screen. This is the agenda for today. Okay, second. Okay, I'll inf oh, I guess you have to call the roll on that, don't you, Vincent? Yes, I do. So, Larry Pikus? Uh, aye. Leonard Rabinowitz? Aye. And then Binti Yost. Okay. I'm pretty sure the next item on the agenda I'm looking at, let me just, um, I, I don't see what you've shared, so I'll use the one that, that, that I had, Vincent, which I, oh, here it comes. Just make sure we have the, the correct one. So public comments? Public comments. Um, I have one public comment that was sent. Um, this is not an agenda item. Um, so I will um, this uh, member is on the call. Uh, public 
um, is on the call, so um, I will not read this, um, but I do not see any other public agendas. Let me go through the emails. Public comments. Thank you, public comment. Okay, there are, are no public comments at this point. All right, um, then uh, the next item on our agenda is to review the proposed budget for 2020-2021 and we turn that over to Vincent and to uh, Ryan Griffin from Exet. Great, thank you. So um, uh, Ryan, um, I will uh, give you access to um, share the screen. Um, are you able to do so right now? Yes, I am. Okay, great. There it is. So right now, um, um, as a result from our last uh, uh, board meeting, we wanted to um, take a look at the um, budget and um, make sure that we have it fine-tuned. Uh, Ryan will go over the revenue part and um, I will um, explain any of the expenditures uh, for this presentation. So with that, uh, Ryan, go ahead and um, uh, why don't we walk through the revenue part of this uh, presentation? Um, sure. Um, the uh, revenue assumptions for next year's um, budget based on the governor's May um, revised proposal forecast a revenue loss of about 7.92% to our local control funding formula. And um, that's, what's, uh, that's what's driving, um, you know, that's a, that's a huge impact to the school. That's the assumption that we're going off of at the moment. Um, as a reminder, that's not, that's not yet been decided on. It's just the governor's proposal. Um, so that's the, the best information that we're going off of at this point. Any questions about that assumption? Uh, Ryan, do we have any sense of when the governor's proposals might be more firmed up or is this? Well, ori originally, we thought it would be sometime in early August. Um, I've heard some discussion it's, uh, that it could be sometime in July, but I think that we're looking at in August, okay. you know, some, sometime around August where, we're, where, where we will hear um, more concrete information as to what was decided. I can tell you right now, the legislature um, didn't like the governor's proposal. They don't want to, um, they don't want to lower funding for schools. Instead, they say that um, they want to fully fund schools. However, they're going to have to give us some IOUs as far as cash goes, um, which means that their proposal would be deferrals, um, which for us means probably a good thing um, because we have some cash and uh, a cash deferral for us wouldn't be that bad. Um, but right now, those are the two schools thought out there in the world. Okay. Um, continuing with revenue, um, the one thing that was brought up at the last, the last presentation was um, the discrepancy between 1920 nutrition revenue and 2021 assumptions. For 1920, all revenues and expenditures flowed through one organization of the accelerated school and that's the accelerated, the actual accelerated school. For next year, we are trying to right size it and um, track everyone's um, fair share of the revenue and the expenses for the program. The big thing to, to keep in mind is for revenue, for nutrition revenues and expenditures is for the most part, they should be a wash. So if we have overages in revenue, we should have offsetting um, overages and the expenditures associated with the program. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about, about those discrepancies. They're all based on participation at the school sites. Um, the total amount is lower for the year, um, but that is uh, 
also offset by a, a much lower expense for the year um, down below. Uh, does anyone have a question about the nutrition program? The, the intent is that it's self-supporting? Yeah, I mean, unless you're running an inefficient program, um, you're, you, so what, the way it works is at the end of the month, we submit our, our claim to uh, the nutrition program um, folks and they reimburse you for the costs of the program during the month. So if, unless we're over ordering and, and over spending, we should be very close to break even here. Okay. Um, not a whole lot of uh, movement in, other, in the other areas for federal. Ryan, I noticed the uh, Title IV funding is only for TAS. Um, do we not, are we not anticipating that for ACES and WAS? Um, title IV? Yes. Um, well, there's two types of Title IV. Um, we have it for all three schools here. Got it. Yeah, we're, we're not anticipating anything in, in this type of Title IV down below for any schools next year. Um, we, we have it at e each school site. Got it. Uh, I was I was looking at the PCSGP. Um, um, do you, what what acronym is that? That's the Public Charter School Grant Program. Um, to be honest, I think that was a budgeting error, um, or not a budgeting error from last year, but perhaps uh, you guys used the object code eighty two ninety six in a different way than than we did. Um, it, it's you know two thousand um, dollars. It's not money that's coming back. Whatever it was. Got it, thank you. Um, that's it for federal. Any questions there? Our big, our big net, our big loss is going to be on the, um, on the revenue side as it relates to our local control funding formula. Most of the other programs at this point in time are, are hopefully going to be close to fully funded. Moving on to state, um, child nutrition. Again, um, we're not anticipating a revenue loss. This is based on our reimbursement claims, um, trying to track based on participation at each of the school sites. Whether this goes up or down, it'll be offset by an expense going up or down. Um, so, uh, I'm not anticipating any revenue losses on that program. Um, nothing re else really to point out other than as far as a, a negative variance on the after school education and safety grant, um, currently we're anticipating a, a reduction in funding there. Um, for the accelerated school and accelerated charter elementary school of roughly about 16%. Um, so we are, we are right sizing our after school expenses down in response, but we will currently we are, are planning for a reduction in that funding. A question I think that uh, was posed at the last board meeting also was what is this other state revenue? Um, these were, this is money that, uh, isn't returning. I'm not quite sure what, what it was, what was budgeted here. Um, but there's no revenue source in the other state portion. I think it was a combination of things, including SB 740. Um, that's the uh, facility reimbursement grant that the accelerated school gets for its, um, rent payments on the church webs on the church site. Um, but that's, that's money that we're not um, anticipating to come back for next year. There's no schedule to support it. Any questions on the state side? No. Um, here, this is something that I think I might be a little too conservative on, and this is the interest, interest income for next year. Um, at each of the schools. I think I'm, I'm uh, anticipating a 3% a 
on uh, total cash in uh, in the bank, um, and that is uh, that's just my estimate as of now. Um, any questions on that? Yes, Ryan. We had discussed um, that the uh, cash interest and the and the and the cash itself, because they were uh, the result of private donations was going to be attributed to the home office yes. as was the interest income and we discussed on the uh, state uh, on the county was paying 2.2 percent and on first republic the number i gave you to use was how much do you recall i believe uh it was somewhere between three and five i don't have that note in front of me at the moment well roughly four percent yeah um just so you know as a follow-up for that I spoke with your independent audit firm and they were telling me that um, they're going to need to look at previous year's audit reports and financial data to ensure that that, I mean, I, I, I think that based on our fund balance and based on the information already provided, it's clear that those funds have not yet been spent, those private dollars. However, they're saying that they need to, they need to verify that. Um, just so that you have all of your ducks in a row. So anytime you and I have a discussion about something like that, and then something like this comes up, always let me know if you would, please. So it doesn't you know, catch me by su surprise in the situation, because maybe I could have cleared it up for them before we um, produce this budget. But in any case, we can always amend it once it gets cleared up. Correct. We'll, we'll do. Sorry about that. So the total interest income you have is, is how much? We're, I'm looking for that line. Next, next year, uh, 627000 Yeah, I, the number that we were discussing was about 950000 mm -hmm. So I Based on whatever. Yeah, so I, I, can, I can increase that. This is a, this is the, a preliminary model um, before the board meeting. Um, yeah, I'd bring it up to 900 or 950 Okay. Well, let me ask a question on that. Um, I understand based on sort of how we're thinking about investing money and whatnot that it, the less conservative thought might make sense, but if the state's gonna issue IOUs and we're gonna drain some of our investment money to cover our operating expenses to get paid back with an IOU, do we really wanna be overestimating our interest earnings? We may not earn it because we may not have it all in the bank. Uh, so let's assume that it is, but, but it sounds like, but we shouldn't, we'd be double dipping, if you will, once, well, we'd have loss of revenue, but I see what you're saying. We have loss of revenue, uh, that we're accounting for, but, but if it came out of, uh, if it came out of reserves, uh, it would obviously come out of the 2.2% piece and how much would we be speaking about ryan assuming uh so what you should do is if if the 900 we had 950 we were using as if our reserves were going to be where they were when we had the discussion where they are now so to the extent that there's a declining balance over the next 12 months you could take that average percentage and reduce the 950 by that percent okay. you follow yeah, I follow. That makes sense to me. Okay. I mean, the issue. The, I, the, I don't the, think the, the problem. It's a good I point, think, Larry. Is, is we just we don't know how, what the IOU is going to be, or how much we're effectively going to have to lend the state, which is lending us, um, and it would draw down the money that's invested. So I, 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 I anticipate. Well, what I'm saying is, but you, I'm sorry. Is fine, I think. Yeah. No. I'm, what I'm saying is, assume that. Uh, we don't get the money because that's what he's assuming for the purposes of this presentation. He's assuming that there is that reduction in revenue. Mm -hmm. So sticking with that assumption, there will be a declining balance throughout the year of our reserve mm -hmm. at the county. And that average declining balance would reduce the 2.2% yield from the county. And that number should reduce the nine hundred dollars or $950,000 projected interest income. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So I can uh, I can make 
some adjustments to that assumption prior to the board meeting. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else to highlight as far as revenue goes. Okay. Other, well, than, that, other than that, we're down quite a little bit. Yeah, we're down about, you know, two, one, million. one million. But Ryan, you did say that, you know, significant amount of that looked like big reductions in some of the federal funding and such. You said that would be offset by expenses, correct? Yeah, so the, the total expense for yeah, the nutrition program, um, I mean, it, it's, it, yeah, those numbers are offset. It, it's kind of a, a balancing act. And, you know, you guys have an in-house operation with staffing, and it's kind of hard to estimate the, you know, amount of dairy and salad and things like that are going to be purchased for next year, especially since my only estimator really is this year, which was kind of wonky based on the pandemic and having to do operations a little bit differently for the last uh, three months of the school year. Um, but yeah, a lot of that revenue in, in uh, the nutrition will be offset by lower expense. We're also assuming some, some uh, larger enrollment assumptions at all three campuses. Mm -hmm. So that, but that why just well. just so I understand why is why are we making adjustments to the revenue and the expenses? Is the, is the revenue actually going to come down, or is it just the way we were booking it for the nutrition? Yes, um, it's going to come down. So at, it's the way we were booking it. I don't think it's going to come down, but as I said, it's hard. It's hard for me to 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 gauge the participation rates at each individual school because that's not the way you were tracking it originally. Um, so, so, so Leonard, in theory, the school nutrition program ought to break roughly even. And what, what, what Ryan's telling us is that he's estimated that for whatever reason, there'll be fewer students getting fewer meals, so we'll get less money from the feds. But as a result, we'll spend less money feeding them because we won't buy as much food or have as many people working on uh, in, in the kitchens. Um, and so it should be even, and it is even in the, um, in, in, in the budget here. Uh, so what I think we should do is, I don't know that we're spending a lot of time with it right now. The question would be is if in a year when Ryan's got a better handle on sort of what's going on in all the budgets and what's happening, we would know, did we in fact really break even or is there a, an unanticipated subsidy. Uh, it's unlikely there's an unanticipated profit. The feds like to audit these things. Um, and so they, they take it back if they if they found that we, we got more than we, we needed to, if you will. Um, and, and the price is really complicated. Uh, that the numbers, my memory, the numbers of food services, when I've looked at it, is it's kind of a pain in the neck. But, but I think the real question is to, to, to assume that it nets to zero in, in this budget and we'll check at the end of the year to make sure that it does. And then the effect. I don't. I really don't believe that that's the case because, you know, the the cost of food is usually only like twenty five or thirty percent. But but what I'm not understanding is why would we assume with a higher enrollment that we would have so many less participants in the program? There's still a lot of unanswered questions at this point. Uh, we don't know what um, uh, school is going to look like coming the fall. Um, you know, we're currently discussing what kind of um, uh, school day should look like in AB, BBA, um, and that will uh, definitely um, uh, directly affect uh, food participation. You know, meaning if we have one cohort coming in the morning, do we feed them one meal and then in the afternoon a different cohort? There's still a lot of unanswered questions. But to Larry's point, we will make, we're uh, currently planning to make the proper adjustments to uh, live within our means. So that, um, you know, if whatever um, class uh, model we follow, uh, we're going to right size and spend accordingly to feed uh, the number of kids um, for the day. Do, do any children at Accelerated at any of the three schools actually purchase lunch themselves or are, they are, are we such that we just give everybody else free lunch? One more time, Larry. Um, 
are there any students who pay their own money for lunches or is everybody fed through the lunch program? Everybody is fed through the lunch program. We are um, following the CEP. Okay, so so we don't have to worry about that other little variable that, that makes life really complicated. Costs us a lot of money. And it's just a, a very large adjustment and it doesn't make sense to me. My guess is if we have two different cohorts, whatever we're doing, I mean, we have students not even attending school now and we're feeding them. So my guess is we're still going to be feeding everybody. I, I just... I'm not sure wh why we picked on that to make that adjustment. I realize that we're saying it's going to be a net net, but I, I don't see it. Anyway, let's move along. If you, if as long as you say you've accounted for the ex a dollar for dollar offset in expenses versus that revenue, and there's there's no net effect, I'm fine with it. But I I bet you it doesn't come out that way. I bet that we have higher expenses and higher uh, revenue, still be a break even. But as long as you break even, I guess it doesn't really matter. We can we can test that and uh, and put yeah. numbers in next year if, if these numbers don't work out. So it's uh, okay. It or we can adjust it once we see what's actually happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. After after we get like one one month of participation data and expense data, we can I can definitely try to right size it from that point going forward. Um, yeah. So I, I understand, you know, Leonard, I think that, that what you're asking are really good questions and I understand why you're asking them. Um, you know, right now I, I gotta say, you know, your nutrition program is a complicated one because it, it's, it's as if, it's almost as if I'm, I'm uh, doing uh, accounting for a, a restaurant. We serve a ton of meals every day. We order a ton of meals every day and we have staff specifically for that. Um, so I'm trying. I'm trying to to be as uh, conservative with our estimates here as possible, but I, I can definitely spend more time on getting this more accurate. But the okay. moral of the story is it should break even. Well, that would be the hope, but I worry that there are economies of scale. You know, uh, the, the rent allocation is not going to change. I don't know that we're going to be able to re significantly reduce. If there, for instance, if there's a 10% reduction in revenue, I don't know that there'll be a 10% labor reduction, you know, accordingly. But, but we'll see. According to our if we break first, even, it doesn't matter, right? If we break even, it doesn't matter. Right. And if we really do. Right. And according to our sources, uh, we don't necessarily see a, re a reduction in the Fed federal um, or reimbursement rate. Um, so far, they haven't signaled any reductions uh, at this point. Okay, I don't think they're going to. That's the. I was talking to the food services people at the state level in another state today, and they, they seem to think it's coming through the same. Okay then. Okay, um, so are there any more questions for revenue? We'd like to move on to the expenditure part. Excellent. Uh, before I do that, uh, there were a couple public comments that came through. Um, let me uh, give me a chance to read one. Um, this comes from Janet Lugo. Uh, not sure that comments, comments have to be on the agenda items. This comment is on your subject matter jurisdiction. It is very bad to have a password. Worse not to tell people your password. Worst of all, to act like it's all okay. okay. And then the second one, um, also from Janet Lugo. Um, you people are horrible. F you, F Eric Garcetti, I yield my time. Okay. So uh, those are the only two public comments that came. Uh, by could could you repeat the second comment by Janet Luigo? Luigo? You people are horrible. F you, F Eric Garcetti, I yield my time. Okay. So those are the two public comments that came during while we were speaking. Um, with that, let's go ahead and move on to the expenditure side. Um, and this is um, an exercise that Ryan and I took uh, deliberate time in working with each of the principals um, and making sure we um, capture um, the expenditures. 
what we took was um, the uh, teacher salary, um, and I, I, we've already shared out um, preliminary um, numbers um, at the last board meeting on what the new CBA would be. Uh, so that's factored in there. Uh, please note again, you know, even though that the line item may show a reduction, you have to know that the accounting is slightly different between what how we report it versus how Ryan is going to report it. Uh, but you can see that the overall increase goes from nine, uh, 8.8 .8 million to 9.6 million uh, for the certificated staff. This does include the retention bonus that um, we've already discussed. Okay. Moving on to classified salaries. Um, again, we're looking to um, uh, do some efficiencies and uh, cost saving measures. Uh, so we're uh, keeping classified staff uh, salaries um, uh, slightly um, consistent um, with a small reduction. And then the employee benefits would follow um, accordingly. So any questions about staffing or um, um, the expenses that follow that? Does the staffing in include some of our wish list items such as tutoring? Yes, it does. It includes the uh, uh, director of tutoring. Um, it includes um, um, a literacy coach. Um, it does include some of the teacher extra hours that uh, um, they'll be doing, hopefully, once we resume school on, um, on tutoring projects. And how many uh, tutors? Um, assumes all the, all the um, teachers. So we're, we're, guess, we're estimating probably uh, two thirds of all the teachers uh, that will be uh, resuming tutoring activities. Okay. Vincent, can I point something out? Yes. One thing that will catch your attention if it hasn't already is the assumption um, with for health and welfare. Um, so I have a pretty pretty hefty assumption here. Um, not having the actual expense by employee available for this budget. Um, so I, I did an assumption of, you know, everybody costing the total amount that they can potentially, um, which is probably not going to be the case. So I think that there will be a lot of savings generated from this expense item. Um, I just, I don't have, you know, good in information to run off of because the County Office of Education processes the health and welfare benefits on behalf of the school. And and also uh, Ryan did a good job in estimating um, healthcare costs are going to go up 12% um, from this year to next year. So that that's a modest increase um, facing um, our current climate. But uh, am I seeing a million 129 going to 2 million 055 on our projections? That's what you're seeing. So that's why I'm saying that's that's got to be too much. But I don't have I don't have accurate data to support you know what next year is going to be looking like. So I I, well, I, made, I made an assumption of ten thousand a person for the year. I mean, Vincent, can't we come up with something that's a little closer to reality? I guess what's that assumption? What assumptions did you use, Ryan, in coming up with that? I put ten thousand for all full time equivalents for that for the year. And base, what's the 10,000 based on? Um, not knowing any better. What, what was it last year as an indicator? I wasn't able to tell based on the information that comes from the County Office of Education. It comes through as a lump sum and I'm not able to track it on a per person basis. I think- but Can uh, we as a proxy, can we take the total number and just the total number of teachers just as a high level sense check to see if that 10,000 makes sense? Mm -hmm. I can. It's a little bit more complicated because it's not just teachers. It's also your certificated and other staff. Um, to Leonard's question, I can do some more research and pull that number out. Um, it just takes time to pull it out of um, from our database and reconcile with LACOS. So I, I guess I guess my quest, I thought the question was, Ryan just told us 
that he multiplied the number of employees times 10,000 and got 2.055 million. Correct. Is that right, Ryan? That's okay. correct. The ones that were eligible last, for benefits. Last year, our budgeted expenditures were 1.129 times, but that was roughly the same number of employees. I mean, close enough. So if we divided by the number of employees, I would think we would get a number substantially less than 10,000. And you said you were overestimating the number that the amount each employee gets because you were assuming every employee would essentially receive all the possible health care benefits that, that, that they would be eligible for. That is uh, a family and multiple children and all dental and vision or whatever the, the, the benefit package is. Um, and, and so that makes sense. But the, it, it sounds like the average was closer to I'm not doing my math real quick, but I want to say 6,6500 of employee rather than 10,000. So what, what led to the $3,500 uh, employee jump is, is, I guess, the question. I'm just sticking with the big numbers here. Rather just than just conservative, cons trying to be conservative. Like, like I said, that, that, was my, that was my assumption. That's typically what I use for new employees right. that I don't know much about. So because yeah. I don't know much about your existing employees, that's what I, I proposed. But I think that based on your what, what, what you're saying, you know, probably seven thousand dollars is a better estimate per person. Um, well, like, I, I actually think I think that might be low because I think I heard Vincent also say, and I'm sorry I didn't say this a second ago, that um, um, better health benefits are going to go up twelve percent. So so we would assume that if I had sixty five hundred last time, I want to add twelve percent to that, which is six fifty. Uh, so so you show me what seventy three hundred now. <laughs> Maybe somebody like Leonard or Binti or one of you all is better at math than I am at that level. Um, but uh, so, so, so I'm not sure 7,000 is a good number, but I guess somewhere, yeah, I mean, I guess- 7,280 would be a good number. Yeah, I can- I'm sorry, what was that Binti? I didn't hear it. <laughs> so basically 7.3, 7, 7,200 per person. Right, I but that, How many people are we speaking about, Vincent? How many employees are there that we're talking about? Possibly 130. Okay. So 130 times 7280. So, um, well, then there's more in there than that, right? Yeah. Um, like just over, it's probably, I mean, probably same as last year. I'm getting a slightly lower numbers. The head count must be off, but. Well, and is this, are we talking about the overall cost being? An assumption of ten thousand, or an increase of X, an overall cost. So I, so I guess, and and, and there are a hundred and thirty employees covered, roughly. You're saying, Vincent? Total, yeah, but um, I would say probably two thirds of that is housed the full uh, benefits. So I, I get it. But if we divide last year by 130, we're coming up with a number of, could that be of 8,686? Yep, $8,600. Oh, okay. I'm not going too good at my math, see? $8,600 times the 12% uh, <laughs> Don't count on me, right? Um, all right, so you, we come up with 86, and you estimated 10, which I guess I'd rather re-estimate high than low or even try to precise it that much because... We don't know. Benefits will go up. No, so, put so the in just to begin with. The problem with the math here is that it is that there things are wacky. So so if we're saying last year we paid eighty six eighty six, and if he uses ten thousand, that would just be a million three, not two million oh fifty five. That's the problem. That ten thousand yeah. times it would have to be two hundred, not one hundred and thirty, to get to that number. Right. So the total headcount is what is askew here, not the amount. One point three million, and you're at two million. You follow me? Yeah, I mean, if it's one hundred and thirty at ten thousand, it's one point three million. And exactly. Number... So why do we have two? I mean, that that was, I think it's just an assumption used by Ryan on the ten thousand per person. I think we can do away with that. So I, I think now we. If we estimate our expenditures high and we don't spend it, that's a good thing in a world where money may go may disappear anyway. Um, 
you know, this is just a budget. It's not like it has to. You don't want to go. Over I it. hear it's you, but I, I mean, I don't want to be throwing. Num- yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to be throwing numbers oh, into the. Let me let me go back here. And uh, I don't know. Was this already adjusted? Okay, we went from. Uh, where am I again? To uh, somebody moved this, but um, yeah, we went from. A million one twenty nine to two million, and it should be a million three based on the ten thousand. So I don't mind being a little high and being conservative, but I, I think the, $100, I, there, yeah. there has to be some basis for these numbers. I mean, you want to go wild, go a million five if that's what we're doing. But if, but unless I'm, I'm, I'm just not getting facts that are adding up here. Mm-hmm. I mean, right, if it's right. 130 and it's 10,000, it should be a million three. I, I don't want to, you know, because Larry, what happens is you start to, when we, other things come up during the year, you have in the back of your head, well, this budget is like loaded, you know, and I don't think it should be. I think it. Okay. I mean, I'm not a, I can't, I, I can't change my screen right now and keep this screen up, but I think that I'm not a hundred percent sure 130 is the right number. You know, I, I, I think maybe it's a good estimate. I'll have to look, but I, I it's $10,000 per every full-time equivalent that you have. Anybody that works more than five and a half hours a day that steps foot on this campus. And that's what it, that's what it spit out. So I can, I can go back and adjust it. I can tell you, I mean, I, I, I highlighted this. I'm telling you it was too high. I'm happy to lower it down based on, um, based on the information that, that we, you know, yeah, that may, maybe are you're saying everybody, but are we just talking about uh, certified in this category, Vincent, or is this everybody? This everybody. Is that cost. Everybody. everybody. So the whole our whole head count, certified, non-certified, are 130 roughly. Yes. You're comfortable, confident with that number. That's the payroll number. The okay. Payroll number well, let's is get about 220 some. 230, so 130 elect for benefits. Oh. So 130 are getting benefits. Correct. Okay, so there, there's your delta, because I don't know of the 220, how many declined the benefit. You know, I, I don't know that. So maybe I, that's why I, th- I said I'm overestimating, and I, I apologize. I mean, but that, that's, my, that's my safest way to present the information. So if it's- Yeah, really- no need- yeah, if it's just 130 or so that, that are participating in the health and welfare plan, then I need to lower this down. But at, but not knowing who declined, I assumed everybody was participating at the most expensive possible amount. So that that was probably too, uh, too conservative on my end. No need to apologize. This is a learning process, you know, because this is your first year at, at doing this. So, okay, that's going to get adjusted. Let's move on. Okay. okay. Then we get into the 4,000 series. And um, Ryan uh, did a, a great job in working with the site administrators on making sure we uh, parse out needs versus wants. And so uh, what you see here, again, is um, just a very careful process and making sure we identify uh, with each principal what they can spend for the next year. Um, again, with a discussion that we had pre- from the previous board meeting that we uh, purchased um, as, many, as much curriculum items for this year to put it on this year's budget in order to preserve next year's budget. Any questions on, on this part? And in the 5,000 series are the operating expenses that um, we would have to do to operate the school. It's utilities, uh, the accounting fees, um, outside contract fees. Uh, we took um, a pretty good look at special education Uh, We wanted to make sure that we um, hired people and brought people onto our uh, salaries so that um, not only can we control the quality of the special education program, but then we can not have, we won't have to pay triple the cost by going to an um, outside uh, vendor. So that was a, a, a deliberate exercise in making sure that 
uh, we took a careful look to, to ensure the integrity of um, and making sure we give the appropriate staffing for our special education program. So you, you, you've reduced expenditures in a lot of these line items, it looks like to me. Yes, that was okay. part, of the, part of the process. Particularly special ed uh, services. Yes, but as you can see, uh, going back up to salaries, uh, we, we have in the line item hiring a number of SPED IAs and, and, okay. and whatnot, so that we don't have, again, it's, it's, it's paying the, the rate in-house versus triple the cost. Well, as, as long as the IEPs will allow you to do that, that's fine. And, and you cut your legal service uh, costs as well. Um, so I assume you're assuming parents will be comfortable with this approach and won't uh, create uh, administrative and legal uh, challenges. Well, I guess and, we'll find out, right? Well, yeah, and um, it's also uh, uh, reaffirming our special education process because mm -hmm. uh, we wanna make sure our SPED administrator, SPED administrator is on top of um, you know, said IEPs and requests. Um, our goal is to make sure we, we tackle it head on and, and address it uh, in a very appropriate uh, manner. Um, so that, uh, again, it's, it's trying to um, involve the parents in the process so that we arrive at, at the appropriate service. And, and I think that's doing it the right way, just so you know, I was just confirming what, what, what I saw. So, I, I, and if you've, you've thought about the numbers and think that'll work, I, I like that a lot because I think reducing special education services costs are uh, in California where you just get a full, some amount of money, whether you, whatever you spend, you wanna be sure and keep your costs as low as possible and make sure the children receive the services they're entitled to. Yeah. Yes, in the other order. You wanna be sure they receive the services they're entitled to in the most cost-effective manner. Right, and it's being, being able to control the quality of it too. Yes. Uh, I think, you know, having it in-house, we have greater control and greater quality um, as opposed to outsourcing it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great. And then you see the intra-agency fee. That's just to offset the home office expense that we've uh, developed. It's a lot of detail here, but again, we Ryan did a great job in, in making sure we we thoughtfully address and putting dollars to the to the name, uh, and making sure you know that we uh, we have a good idea on what is expected and um, from each of the principals, as far as our expenditures are concerned. So it's, it's a million and a half dollars in savings across the the five thousand category. That's good. That is our goal. Good. That's where, if you're gonna to have to save money, that's where you wanna do it, not in people, hopefully, right? Yeah, that's our goal. But to, to be sure, for those people that are listening, the intent is to improve our special IAP services in doing yes. this. Yes, well, it seems to me to the extent you can keep them on campus and include them in regular classroom activities the extent possible, you're following what the literature says about special education and actually doing what special education um, professionals would say is the right way to do this. So, so the, the, the approach makes great sense to me and is the way you'd wanna do it. So, saving money is always a good thing, but in special ed, the priority is always the proper services for the children. Um, and so um, this is a, it's a it's, if you will, a Leonard, it's a bonus if you save money when you do it this way. But I would think exactly. for most children, this would probably be an improvement in, in, the, in the services they receive by keeping them at the school and giving them access to the rest of the children who are there. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, we're on the same page. It's such a, such a, such a treat, Leonard, when, when we, feel, we think like that. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, now here's uh, the kicker. Um, we're still seeing a, a a net income loss of $3.2 million across all three schools. Well, yeah, I think that potentially we potential areas of savings also, um, right? Yeah. Like so, so we're talking about a pickup of about 300,000 in interest, hopefully, and a reduction of about 600, 700 in uh, 
in healthcare that was overstated. So, I mean, we could be looking at, I don't know, 2 million two or 2 million five. Mm -hmm. 2 million two, roughly, give or take. Um, our, we we yeah. consciously have a plan that sort of in over the next few years, deficit spends by about 2 million a year. So, so the real issue here is we're, we're a million dollars, million two worse than sort of what our plan was. Is that right, Vincent? Yes. Okay. So in a world where the state's facing a $54 billion budget deficit, if that number at the bottom were to come true, I don't know whether I'd call it masterful management of the school district of the school or, or, or magic, but it would be a pretty amazing thing. So um, if, if we think of it in terms of what we intended to do and how close we came under totally unexpected circumstances, say in January, uh, I'd say that looks pretty good. Yeah. It's never good to see negative so numbers. So you're inclined to... Are you inclined to say we should approve it, assuming that it's going to look like about a $2.5 million deficit once uh, they um, uh, once they make the adjustments we spoke of? I'd say that it will be. It's not approval. We're not approving the budget. Uh, this no, no, no. We're not approving it. We're we're recommending it. Recommending Thank approval. You. Right? Yes, that that is correct. Yeah, I would say that I would recommend approval, even if it wound up at 3.2 million deficit. Because I think that um, it's a million dollars worse than we thought we would be. And we want to make every effort to provide the same or as close to the same level of services for the children in the three schools as we possibly can. And um, either this whole ugly mess will blow over and we'll be able to get back on track in a year or we'll be facing even steeper and deeper cuts because the economy and the, the upcoming tax, you know, I mean, we don't know what California's tax revenue is going to look like, but it's so heavily income based and on high incomes around capital returns, uh, capital gains that I would anticipate uh, we have problems for several years to come and, and it won't always be this easy. And we won't always be able to finance our deficits out of our, our uh, reserves. So I think this looks pretty good. You know what else? On the bright side, on the bright side, I wanted to point out, uh, my, uh, number one, that Larry, thank you, uh, and Binti and myself, uh, none of us get paid for doing this. We are spending time here where we otherwise would be getting paid as, on a pro bono volunteer basis. One, two, is that the, the money that's going to cover this deficit has come in from. Uh, outside fundraising that uh, we've reserved uh, prudently just for this purpose uh, for a rainy day like this. And number three, I don't see anything in this budget, uh, and I think that's the way it should be, for potential outside funding for some of these programs uh, because of the climate that we're in, although we're definitely going to be working on getting additional funding to offset some of these losses. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And I guess I have one more question. I hate, almost shudder after what I've spent the last two days doing in my world. These assumptions are based on the theory that we're all going to be back in school come, come, come fall. Is that true? This is the okay. latest, greatest assumptions that we have <laughs> at the moment. All right. So we don't know what happens if that assumption doesn't hold. And we'll worry about that, I guess, when it doesn't hold. Yeah. Right. If it doesn't hold, I'm sorry. I will say though that it, it's been great working with Ryan. Uh, Ryan's got some great ideas. Um, he and I have been talking through a number of issues that uh, we uh, we want to start planning strategically long term. Um, I think this is a great step in not only um, right sizing the budget per se um, by you know making sure that we're appropriate in in our spending, but just um, you know, having the lawful exercises that we can take back to the admin team and say, hey, here's some opportunities to start uh, becoming more efficient or more um, um, uh, streamlined in, in our services. Um, I think that is uh, one thing that, uh, 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 it's been a huge exercise <laughs> to say the least because it's multiple conversations with multiple parties. Um, so, if anything, this uh, budget represents um, our first steps in, in trying to tackle this on a longer term basis. So that hopefully, not only can we weather the recession, but in a year or two or three years, we should be able to uh, streamline a lot of our uh, services and become very efficient in the process.
Yeah, can I, can okay. I out? Leonard, Leonard, can I point one thing out? Sure, no. is that Ryan? Yeah, this is Ryan, Ryan from, yeah. from, from XED. And, you know, I've had to be yeah. a part of a lot of budget meetings this year. And, you know, I just wanted to say that there are a lot of charter schools in the state um, and especially in, you know, LA County that aren't able to keep all of their staff, that aren't able to honor any salary increases and alternatively are letting people go and putting furloughs in their budget models. And I just did, I did want to point out that, that this board and this school, you know, they didn't do any of that. Everyone, everyone's still moving on the salary scale. Um, you know, everyone still has their jobs. And I just think that that's, that's worth noting because that's not the case um, for other organizations and that's not common during this climate. Yeah. Much appreciated. Yes, I'd, I'd Bindi, like to... I. Bindi, are you okay with an with an uh, uh, approval, a recommendation yeah. for approval? Yeah. Okay. And and I'd like to thank um, both Vincent and uh, Ryan for for their hard work in, in getting to these numbers. Uh, these kinds of budgets are hard, I think, to do in in the best of times, and they're harder and nowhere near as much fun when, when there's less money instead of more money. So uh, thank you for your efforts, both of you. In, in making okay, so there's no voting or motion or anything on this. We just, I guess we'll, you know, we can c conclude. We, we thank Hilda and Janet for listening yeah. in. And um, well, Leonard, any, anything Leonard, else? Vin? Leonard, I think we have three more items on our, on our agenda. Is that right, Vincent? Okay. Correct. Just a couple more items. Um, I, I have to drop. I'm, unfortunately, I have a call at 4 o'clock that I'm late for. All right. Sorry. Uh, we'll, apologies. We'll, we'll see you in a couple Thanks. of days, hopefully. Thanks, Vinci, for good. joining us. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. So, uh, May I get control of the screen? Um, we, we can go over the next couple items uh, very quickly. Um, um, just wanted to give um, just a quick update on the investments. Um, we just got a portfolio review, um, <laughs> coincidentally on June 10th, uh, before um, how the stock market behaved. Um, but um, I will say though that working with First Republic has been nice. They've been uh, very responsive and very reassuring through um, this crisis. Um, They've certainly answered both myself and Leonard's questions um, um, uh, very expedi expeditiously and, um, and in a great way. Um, the great thing is that um, uh, the portfolio is not experiencing the same amount of turbulence as that of the stock market. So um, even though that uh, we had a massive sell off the following day, um, our cash reserves will uh, remain fairly consistent through, through this turbulent times. So um, for the interest of time, you know, I, you know, this is just a quick update. I think for future meetings and for future board presentations, we definitely wanna make sure we come back to the board on our investment uh, performance so that uh, we can get a good sense of where our, our money is at. And I might add that, um uh there was there was a sell off the day after and it, it, it's most of, you know that's picked back up now but with 70 percent of our money in fixed income whatever happens in the bond market that um th these prices are based on market to market the day of the report but whatever happens uh let's say there's a sell-off it, it doesn't matter because the bonds being held to uh maturity are yielding exactly the interest that they're supposed to yield when we bought them. So our, our income will be exactly the same. And at maturity, they will be uh, at least what we, the, the principal will be what we paid for them. So they won't, in that 70%, there won't be any fluctuations mm -hmm. in value. But again, okay. we, we just want to make sure we bring this to the finance committee um, and for future discussions. Um, in the future. Yeah. Every. Yeah. And, and it looks like the percentages and stuff are, are in keeping with the, um, uh, the, the investment policy. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, we're, we're shade under 30% with equities, which is within the confines of our investment policy, which by all means is very, fairly conservative uh, for this type of market. Um, so that has to, that's with our investment portfolio. Again, no um, action needed. Um, you know what, I jumped ahead. I'm sorry, Ryan. Um, we, oh, the financials, that was my bad. Yeah. Um, I, was looking, I was looking already, no. I, Oh, it's there. I just didn't see it either. My apologies, too. Yeah, our, our goal was to try to get the financials done, but, you know, it's still taking time to reconcile our local transactions. Uh, Ryan already spoke to that earlier. Um, and, you know, having done that myself personally, it it's a lot of just lines of code to, to get through with no reference. Um, so Ryan still and his team still busy handling uh, the financial uh, piece. Um, but uh, uh, we've got plans in place to make sure that we can close our financials um, in July so that we have the financials ready for year end and audit. Uh, Ryan, did you want to add to that? No, just that, you, you know, you hit it right on the, the nail right on the head. It, it's quite challenging working with the county office from time to time. Um, it, it's been extra challenging during the pandemic. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, um, we're, we're moving through and we're, we're trying our best to get everything in order for year end. The good thing is that uh, we work with LACO to give uh, Ryan and his team direct access so that they can pull the information as opposed to waiting for LACO. Uh, LACO typically takes two weeks to reconcile their books before they close theirs. And then Ryan has to have literally like three days to rush to get his site closed. Um, so uh, we're gonna, we, we streamline that process so Ryan and his team have direct access to LACO's um, information. Okay, so. Um, so those are our two um, items. Um, uh, we wanted to, we already talked our recommendations to the board, which we'll present at Thursday. Um, uh, Dr. Pike is our recommendation um, for our presentation. We'll probably just give the brief overview um, and just some of the bring back items that are the last board uh, asked for. And then we'll just turn it over to the fin uh, finance committee for the recommendations. This presentation okay. hopefully shouldn't take more than 15 so minutes, I'm guessing. And and depending on where it arises in the March of the order on, um, on Thursday, I may or may not be present. Leonard, I've been um, summoned to a meeting of deans of faculty in the middle of that meeting that I I at saw need, that, yeah. I at least need to start with it. it, it on further review, it's a very technical meeting that my assistant dean needs to be at more than me. So I'm hopeful I can just sort of show my face, hide my video, and disappear. Um, but I would say at about 10 o'clock, I'll be gone for five or 10 minutes. Uh, I'll check in so we can make a quorum, and I will try to get back as quickly as I can. It's just uh, the the um, all the complexities of... Uh, Accelerated budget are multiplied by a factor of about a million at a place the size of U.S. <laughs> so it, uh, and, and and the difference is is uh, Vincent and Ryan are are focused on the financials and, and making things work and and any good academic knows that if you get a set of data you really need to study it for several years before you can make any conclusions. So it's it's very challenging for us to actually have solutions uh, in, in in real time. Uh, so it's been um it's been a very interesting and um, repetitive process in some ways. Uh, but we're we're slowly turning our battleship to to face uh, into the wind on these things. So I guess we'll get there. All right, I need to jump off. Is there anything yeah. else that uh, imperative here? No, I think we just need to adjourn the meeting, right, Vincent? That's correct. All right, and I think all I have to do is say the meeting is officially adjourned at four twelve p.m. Very so good. we're adjourned. God bless and thank you. All right, thank thanks, you, thank you. Thanks for being here. Take care. Thank you. All okay. Right. All right. Take care. Bye. Uh, Vincent, I don't think there's anything else I need to do or worry about until we're, we're there on Thursday. Um, so shoot me a note if you need to talk or something before then, and we'll we'll think about what we need to do. But but this feels good. And, and, and Ryan and, and Vincent, really good job. Um, and the things where we're, we're kind of shooting in the dark on some of those estimates <laughs> make sense to me. I'm, I think next year when we have more data, we can precise some of these a little better. Yeah. But we'll get there. So I, I, I actually understand the challenges there. Uh, Thanks. Uh, so, so, so appreciate uh, the things you try to do and the estimates you get to. And, and I was just uh, 
on the on the benefits, just trying to help think through what you've done more than be concerned about what you've done. So, so. No, 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 I appreciate it. I, I always try to lean to the conservative side. If I've got a report of variance, I want to report a, a one in the right direction, not in the wrong. Yes. I think that's that's always a prudent thing to do for all of us. And uh, okay. you know, this school is blessed with with a fairly uh, substantial reserve that 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 would uh, ride us through a small mistake. But we don't want to make those mistakes. We want to get it right so we know what's going on and we can use the money for children. Absolutely. So I think that's always a, a good goal. That looks good. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Dr. Pikus. It was my pleasure. It's always great to uh, visit with all of you, and we'll we'll see you Thursday. All right. Yeah.